Last time on Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Bennick, Constable Odo wants you to assist Dax. She's trying to unscramble Carrick's computer files. You need something? Yes, Captain Sisko mentioned something about the drones. Yes, they're beginning to reappear. A new type of vessel, but the same pattern. One appears through the wormhole every three minutes or so. They'll continue to build up their strike force, unit by unit, until a trigger vessel arrives. Then they'll attack all at once. Transmission from Ambassador Carrick, Tyrion Diplomatic Corps, United Federation of Planets, to Captain Benjamin Sisko, Starbase, Deep Space Nine. Report on first contact, Scythians. Despite serious linguistic difficulties, which I will elaborate on later, I was able to communicate the existence of the wormhole, the location of DS9, as well as an invitation to open informal talks with the Federation. In addition, I have in my possession certain items which the Federation will find of great interest and potential value. If I tell you what I know about Quark, will you take me with you to the Gamma Quadrant? Why do you want to go to the Gamma Quadrant? I just don't belong here, all right? I want to get out. How is Quark involved with this murder? You don't think he did it? I don't know exactly, but he's scared. Not scared of being arrested. Scared of being killed. You have no proof of these accusations. I demand to speak to Captain Sisko. Oh, you will, Quark. And you can explain to him why we have a dead Federation diplomat on our hands. I'll be glad to cooperate with your investigation in any way that I can. I'm always glad to lend a hand to the authorities. If I had to point a finger, I'd say the Lycosians are the likeliest suspects. I've heard they're from the Altair Consortium. I'd like to see what evidence you've been able to collect. All I've got for certain right now is what the initial tricorder readings tell me. The murder weapon, the traces of tarragon radiation, and the corrosive used on the Ambassador's pad. Who are your suspects? You don't really think that Quark killed Carrig? No. But I'd wager more than a spin of his Dabo wheel that he's involved somehow. The Lycosians. Of the beings remaining aboard the station, they're the likeliest suspects. What do you know about the Ambassador's mission in the Gamma Quadrant? He said he had difficulty communicating with the Scythians. He said he was bringing back some items that could turn out to be valuable to the Federation. It was very vague, actually as if he didn't want to talk about it on an open frequency. If we can find out what was stolen from his room, we may be able to find out more about who killed him and why. And now, the continuation. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode four of Deep Space Nine Harbinger, where we continue our not so exciting journey, uh, investigating the murder of Carrick, and uh, now having taken over the ambassadorial duties of Carrick, we are about to have a chat finally with the Scythians, who are this uh, mysterious alien race from the Gamma Quadrant who came along with some drones that are attacking the station. So uh, let's get on with some more dialogue heavy uh, action and see if I get to do anything this episode. So let's chat with, uh, I think it's Ensign Yarrow here. Desma Yarrow, I want to say. Let's find out. Ensign? Yarrow, sir. Desma Yarrow, sir. Yes, Desma, I remember you. Yes, sir. There you go. So I was completely right. Uh, yes, we'll just start going through the list here. You heard about Ambassador Carrick's death? Murder, you mean. Yes, sir. What were the Scythians doing when Carrig was killed? Did any of them leave the ship? Not that I know of, not through this airlock. One tried to, though, twice. I talked with him a little. The Scythian who you talked to, what did you talk to him about? Well, I can't exactly say. Can't exactly say? Why not? We didn't talk about anything. Exactly. I think his name is Rune. You said what, exactly, to the Scythian? Don't think it matters, sir. I don't think he understood me. I sure didn't understand him. What exactly did the Scythian say? Well, not much. Never more than a word at a time. 
I, I feel like she's being just intentionally vague. It's kind of annoying. I mean, just tell us what he said. Uh, okay, it's difficult to communicate, but it's okay. Just, just relay what he said to us. What words exactly did the Scythian say? Well, uh, ally was one, and danger, he didn't say a lot. Why do you think his name is Rune? Or her name. Rune, I mean, I mean, he could be a she. Oh my god, do we have to keep doing this so quickly? I want to know why he's called Rune. Just tell me. What is it that makes you think he or she is named Rune? I asked him, or her, her name, and she said Rune. Yeah, okay, th this is a good question. Why is she being so damn elusive? Why are you being so elusive, Ensign? Well, to tell the truth, sir, I wasn't supposed to be talking to the Scythians at all. Carrig's orders. I'm in charge here now, Ensign. Yes, sir. Can you be a little more clear about what the problem is with the Scythians? To be honest, I'm not really sure. Ally, tell me more about that. That was the first thing he said. He said it like it summed everything up, like that one word was supposed to say everything. Danger? Danger to who? He didn't say. Was the Universal Translator having some difficulties? No, the Scythian didn't give it much to translate, just a few words. Go on, please. I'm not sure we really communicated. Never mind, Ensign. Let's just let it rest for the moment. Yes, sir. <laughs> I like how we, the player character, are actually starting to sound annoyed with her. Because this is kind of annoying to talk to her. Are the Scythians here? I want to talk to them. Let's see if the Scythians have unlocked their side. <laughs> I, I love how they just instantly appeared there. That there's no transition. They don't just you don't just see the hatch open and then <clears throat> they just walk through the the door. Nope, just instantly there. Uh, this game continues to impress with its uh, animation. My name is Bannock. I'm with the Tyrian delegation of the United Federation of Planets. Welcome to Deep Space Nine. I regret to inform you that Ambassador Carrig is dead. Carrig. Dead. Now, funny thing, I, I've always actually remembered this voice line. This Carrig. Dead. I it's it's just stuck with me since childhood. There's there's one actually one other thing that has stuck with me since childhood since I played this game, and that's uh, a puzzle that's going to come up later. But uh, yeah, um, why are we meeting these guys in an airlock? I, I can they not come to a conference room or can't we go on their ship? Or did we not have the budget to think about how the Scythian ship would look? I don't know. I am Ambassador now. Ambassador Bannock. Carrig. Dead. And you can see why that line might have stuck with me as well, because they do it twice. My name is Bannock. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Look, if you know where the drones are coming from, tell me. Do you understand me? If you can, please say so. Do you know why the drones are trying to destroy this station? Citadel! <sighs> okay, so this is a very one-sided conversation, um, but certain words seem to trigger them. Citadel! Danger! This citadel, is it in danger? Citadel, show danger! Silence. They've kind of got a Vedic, Bajoran Vedic hat thing going on here, haven't they? Also, uh, the design of these aliens kind of remind me of, um, was it the Tosk they were called? It was a season one episode of show. DS9. Oh, hello. Rune! 
Okay. He wants to show. As I was saying, um, it's a DS9 one, uh, season one episode where this alien race called the Tosk, kind of lizard looking alien, comes through. It kind of reminded me of them. Show Citadel! Okay, so me talking there, they, they just talk amongst themselves and. <laughs> Congratulations, Ambassador. You've survived your first negotiation with the Scythians and vented remarkably little plasma, if you know what I mean. Uh, they, they disappear just as suddenly as they arrive. I mean, at least they're consistent. Thanks, Ensign. They are a challenge. Yes, sir. Dax to Yarrow. Ensign, is Bannock with you? Yes, Lieutenant. Tell him I could use his help up here in Ops. I finished analyzing Carrick's logs, but some anomalies persist. Right away, Lieutenant. Has the Ambassador opened up communications with the Scythians? Yes, ma'am. And closed them, too. I see. What happened? I'll tell you all about it when I get to Ops, Lieutenant. <laughs> Good. Dax out. I guess you'll be on your way to Ops, sir. I'd like to hear what you think about the Scythians, Ensign. How would you try to communicate with them? Well, I don't exactly know, I'm sure, Ambassador. They don't seem to like to talk much. But my father told me, if you want to make friends, make sure the other guy does more talking than you do. But that would mean... You wouldn't say anything at all. <laughs> yes, sir. You seem skilled at putting people at their ease, Ensign. What made you decide to strap on a phaser? Well, sir, they tell us the sign of a good security officer is she never lets a situation deteriorate to where a phaser is necessary. By the way, I notice you've strapped one on, too. I hope my situation doesn't deteriorate, Ensign. But just in case... Yes, diplomacy by other means. But now you better think about getting back up to Ops. But I want to talk to you a bit more. Any ideas about Carrick's death, Yarrow? Who might have killed him and why? No, sir. A seemingly meaningless crime. But I'm sure whoever did it had their reasons. They always do. Thank you, Anson. Goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Okay. What if we talk to her again? Because there's clearly an option too. Ensign Yarrow. I guess you'll be on your way to Ops, sir. Yes, Anson. Thank you. Goodbye. So, a polite fuck off, and we can't talk to her again. So, why, why even bother letting us do that again if there is literally nothing to do? I hope I'm not complaining too much about this. This lovely game. Now we've got to go all the way back to the promenade, which is kind of tedious. I think the other turbolifts do end up working at some point, so you can just do shortcuts, but not yet. Nope, can't use that one. Carrick's quarters. What about this one? Oh. Turbo lifts to this area oh. are currently under repair. Nearest operational turbo lifts are located in the lower promenade. Yeah, I'm pretty sure at some point we can at least use that one, but until then. <sighs> hang, hang on. Do you see that? The the. They, they, they mucked up here. Do you see how the door, the windows are on this side? If I go forward one, the doors are on this side. And if I go forward again, it's back here. Someone messed up. Nice. Okay, well. There's our Lycosian friends, still just chilling. Statically so. There was the Bajoran woman. Um, if she has anything to say at the moment. Is she still at the window? No, she seems to have disappeared. Okay. Gonna see if 
Johnny has anything interesting to say? Nope, just just chilling here with her with her lovely pose. It's like everyone's just frozen in time most, uh, when you're just walking about here. I, I really wish I had something more positive to say about this game. Can't talk to Hodo. Because, yeah, it's, it's just not very fun. At least Final Unity had lots to comment on. Here I'm just sitting here twiddling my thumbs thinking, well, what the fuck do I talk about now? Computer. Ops. I like how the, um, when you arrive at Ops, the sound effects don't change to indicate that you are in Ops until you turn around. I've already just said that, you know, they have the uh, elevator that climbs up. It's like a, an actual prop thing, like, yeah, like this. So by the time we're here, we should hear the sound effects of Ops, so... Cisco's gone, so it's just... just Dax by her lonesome up here. We can't actually go into Cisco's office, can we? We can't even look into Cisco's office. Oh, well. Let's have a chat with Dax, and now she's moving again. So it's only certain scenes where she's actually animated. Again, lazy. Or bugged. Vanek, glad to see you. We have a problem. You mean besides the storm, the evacuation, the attack, the murder, and the drones? Yes, besides those petty concerns. I've recovered the pad data. About 40% should be readable, but it turns out all the relevant data is scrambled. Scrambled? You mean encoded? Exactly. Carrig evidently used encryption on his log entries. To read them, we'll have to break his code. Um, maybe the station computer. The station computer's already had its chance, Bannock. But to try all possible permutations, almost a quarter Google of them, well, we just don't have that kind of time. Compared to this, the Altonian brain teaser is a simple coloring job. <laughs> okay, two things there. Uh, a Google. Uh, that, that's a term I learnt a few years ago from a BBC documentary about uh, Infinity. Uh, not not the uh, the company or the search engine Google, but um, yeah, a Google is a is a, an extremely high number. And then there's a Googleplex, which is a uh, hundred. Uh, is it one to the power? One one Google to the power of a hundred or something like that. I think that's a Googleplex. Anyway, second thing, the Altonian brain teaser, we have actually seen that. I think that was an early season one episode of DS9. It's some sort of uh, circular puzzle thing, and uh, Bashir was trying to hit on Dax when they were trying to solve it, so nice callback there. I guess this is a positive thing I can say, that the, the writing as far as uh, continuity is pretty good, and uh, the characters, as I said already, uh, the actors are doing well with their characters. Anyway... Should we say something about the Altonian Brain Teaser? The Altonian Brain Teaser? I've never tried that one. I've been playing with it for over 400 years. I've gotten pretty far along. I have the kaleidotemporal texturing down pat, but... But never mind that. About Carrig's cipher. The problem is, to even begin, you need to select the right color. For each row, out of at least 10,000 hues. Actually, that's not a problem. What? You know which colors he uses. I mean used. I'm not supposed to, but on Chimera's 10, after Carrick... Don't tell me anything I'll have to arrest you for, Bannock. But if you somehow know the colors, you can access some of the data. There's another cipher somewhere in there, a syntactic code sequence. So I thought maybe they'd give us a puzzle out. They are going to give us a puzzle, and this is the second thing that I just mentioned earlier that uh, I do remember quite clearly. Um, but it's like, oh, oh, there might be a puzzle here. No, no, we, we, we know that already. Oh, okay. So there's one bit of gameplay sequencing that could have been done, but isn't. Anyway. Syntactic code sequence? What is that exactly? You unlock the log entries by punching in the proper sequence on the cipher screen. It's like assembling words into a sentence. Carrick was a connoisseur of languages, wasn't he? Yeah, he spoke about 50 languages and understood 200. I think he makes use of that. There's a translation matrix in the cipher block. Want to take a look? Right there to your left. Just input the code colors in the correct order. And if I do, 
If the panel lights, you've got it. Thanks, Jedzia. Uh, may I call you Jedzia? If you like. Get busy now. Good luck, Bannock. Nothing else to say, so let's get on with it. Transmission from Ambassador Carrick, Tyrion Diplomatic Corps, United Federation of Planets, to Captain Benjamin Sisko. Hang on. We've had this. Star date 48975.1. Copy sent, Starfleet Command. Report on first contact. New race. Present designation, Scythians. Okay, we've had this, so I've clearly clicked on the wrong panel. Okay. Why, why continue to offer that? So we, we don't need this anymore. Also, why is that this icon and that's this icon? That's the first time I've actually seen the hand icon as well. Okay. Hope they haven't changed. Ha! Ha ha! Okay, so we've got five colours. Five more buttons here. Presumably this is a code readout and another button. So let's press the big button first and see what happens. Cardi, Lam, Nikto, Kochme, Armo. Okay, so this. What do these ones do? Cardi. Okay, so these play the individual sounds. This plays all five and this. This must be the order? I... Ah, uh, okay, okay, so we, we shift the orders about here, that's... That's how that works. Okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So... Oh, uh, oh. Computer. Translate. Specify desired word. Okay, so th there is stuff here as well. We talk to the computer, the computer can translate the words. Right, great. Cardin. Cardin. Tarkin word, meaning many. Yes, uh, I remember the Gochme is a Klingon thing, very Klingon sounding word. Translate. Plum. Plum. To be thick word, meaning is. Translate. Nikto. Nikto. Baradin word, meaning arguing. Translate. Gochme. Klingon word meaning voices. Translate. Armo. Armo. Tyrian word meaning peace. Okay, so that should translate them all now. Um, don't know why we can't just do that all at once, but anyway. So let's see. Let's have a listen. Many is arguing voices peace. Now, I remember as a kid being quite frustrated with this, and I, what was this, this was 1996, this game, so I would have been 13, 14, um, but yeah, I, I struggled with this as a kid, I was not I was never particularly good at puzzle games or adventure games, um, but uh, yeah, uh, my I remember getting my brother to help me with this, but I do remember this, this is Peace is Many Voices Arguing and makes total sense when you think about it. As a kid, apparently, I couldn't figure that out. We can go and ask Dax for help, I'm pretty sure. I'm kind of curious what she wants to say about this, so let's have a look. Take a closer look at the cipher panel, Ambassador, please. Oh, okay, apparently she can't help us. Well, screw you, Dax. Anyway, so, peace is many voices arguing, so which one was this? Many. Peace is many, so... Arguing. And that should be here. Peace. Peace. Is. Okay, so that should be it. Peace. Is. Many. Voices. Arguing. There we go. Alright, so standard and personal logs. You have obtained access to the records of Tarib, first ambassador of the Tyrian Delegation Federation of Planets. Unauthorized. Immediately. Oh god, there's a lot of entries. Um, some of them are probably going to be uh, not working, but let's just start going through it. 
and that point three have completed the journey through the stable wormhole and en route to the rendezvous with the sent a draft of the first federation to the and then awaiting a reply. First contact has been seeing some difficulty with the universal translate malfunction or linguistic incompatibility. Fortunately, my own linguistic skills to open a rudimentary dialogue. At first glance, the technology of traces of latinum in most metallic bases. I misclicked there, there should have a signal. Content irretrievable. Okay, so that doesn't matter. So, yeah, first contact with the Scythians, we, we already know that they have some high-tech and lots of latinum in their um, metallurgy, so... Overcome my frustration. The desire to communicate is so great. I am so reticent. Except not interested in pursuing contact. Realize being enough interaction for the universe create a sufficient linguistic base, but I stumbled upon a first contact to only to be cultural xenophobia. Days here grow short. Do it in the next four days. How can I hope to a firm base forced to leave before cementing for criteria for first and it contacted by a group here in the Gamma. Loose affiliation of pieces, hints, and insignia. Valuable merchandise. I would like to dismiss the French group, however. Reputation for those to miss an opportunity to me. Content irretrievable. Left the Scythians unsure of the status of our relationship. I will have time to study the linguistic accumulated during my visit. A thought has come to me to apply Don Ngar's regressive to the linguistic base. Somehow a stronger communication must be further our relationship with the Scythians. Difficulty in finding these aliens. The great mystery surrounding this so called valuable item. I find it all rather adolescent. The Federation Ambassador, the Delivery Service, I believe it should be made clear. The Ambassadorial Corps provides a unique service. From me, or from the Federation, I resent. The position not that he's worth is dubious to begin with. I meet in one hour with the take possession of the devices. I hope their function and value will make this side trip work. So it sounds like he uh, went to some trade event and someone offered him some valuable devices. I'm not sure if this is a trade event from the Scythians. I, I think I heard there was a loose affiliation, so maybe there's a bunch of other species there or something, but it seems to be how he got his hands on these uh, unknown devices for which he he's probably been killed for, so... Eureka! I believe I have the root cause of the Scythians' reticence. It is not fear of contact at all. Clarity of communication. Dear to them. They value individual context is our overly verbose. Overwhelm them. Economy. Minimal combinations. I now look forward to contact but I will be into use. Okay, so that's uh, clearly how we actually are supposed to talk to the Scythians. Um, they prefer 
minimal use of words. They don't like the amount of words we use. So it's just single words or two words with probably how your your intonation or um, enunciation of words and uh, how are you, uh, what's the word, communicate the context and the clarity of what you're trying to say. Um, I'll talk a bit more about that later, but yeah, that, that seems to be what that's going for. Awesome. The data has been relocated to the person. Okay, so these must be the scans of the uh, artifacts or devices he found. So let's go have a listen to the personal logs. Warning, you have obtained access to the personal logs of Tarot. Personal log Tarot, start 848. Voyage through the wormhole was exhilarating. I should poem about it when I had Kolos to Cardassian my crew. To run my Cardassian diligently and mastering yet another language. Decision. Heard. Warp capabilities. Probability already picked. Warp signals. I grew very excited. Nothing is as invigorating as first contact. Press my belief that the birds who have been first contact too strict. She fell under acceptable guidelines. Content irretrievable. Discovered the most delicious poem. Zika. Read this epic in its original Klingon, as opposed to the abysmal translate. Companies the Klingon text brought a great clarity inherent in all artistic translations. Hmm. Kind of reminds me of a uh, undiscovered country when uh, Chang is going on about Shakespeare, reading Shakespeare in the original Klingon, how it loses some translation. I always wondered about that. How is it the original Klingon? Is Shakespeare Klingon originally? Actually, I can kind of answer that question, sort of. Uh, Klingon Academy kind of address this. Uh, the player can ask Chang about Shakespeare. Why do he, does he find Shakespeare so fascinating? It's because Chang basically thinks he's basically a warrior poet and is, is uh, someone who should have been Klingon based on his writings, but was not. So, anyway. Not segueing into a much better game. Let's continue. We the Scythians pointed that I was not. Jason's got farther. I was beginning to feed timidity. Cautious reticence. To consider contact a failure. I am no friend to personal failure and would not like to open relationship this late stage in my life. I do kind of like some of the characterization we're getting for Carrie Kerr. I already mentioned in the previous episode where um, uh, I quite enjoyed the way the voice actor is presenting himself here as this kind of uh, very self confident kind of snobby, stuffy. Uh, I say I'm, I'm very good at my job, and it's probably a bit too complicated. You know that that kind of um, uh, attitude, uh, and that little tidbit there about he's you know he's uh, no friend of personal failure, doesn't want to be reacquainted. I think that. Uh, it's a, it's a nice bit of characterization there, especially for someone we don't see. After several so-called talks with this so-called confederation of species, I begin to miss the quiet reserve of the Scythians. We talk and talk, but they have yet to deliver these supposedly valuable devices. And it's an errand boy, ambassador of interplanetary repute. Okay, so he did go to a trade conference and it was part of a bunch of species, but not the Scythians weren't involved. I, I was kind of in the impression that these devices were Scythian in nature, but perhaps they're not. We'll, we'll see going forward. Oh, unbelievable! Deliver seven such devices in my hands. They keep them. If these to the function as from it. Some trick. Be the scientific edge. Even out our military and back. But ah. Set the demons on me. 
learn of the manual of science and jewels. I think there was another reference to the Dominion there. The second uh, Dominion reference we've had, something about uh, how these potentially devices will have a significant military application. Um, based on what I remember from what these devices actually turn out to be, or at least one of them, um, let's just say it would kind of even the score or even the uh, playing field when it comes to uh, the Jem'Hadar being able to cloak themselves on the battlefield. Content irretrievable. See to light the fraction of not more sophisticated than the barriers of flashing field and the wrong spagotic. Never the Confederation told fraction mantles. No, they are in my possession. Refraction mantle. So yeah, personal cloaking devices. I wasn't sure if it was going to tell us what they were at this point, but yeah. So the, he's basically found personal cloaking devices, and hence why these would be obviously very valuable to the Federation, because the Jem'Hadar can just do that. So yeah. I kind of wonder actually, with the... The Treaty of Algeron states that the Federation cannot develop its own cloaking devices. Obviously, we know the Defiant has a cloak because the Romulans lent it to them. But does that include personal cloaking devices? I mean, I would assume it would. Uh, potentially, you know, the Treaty just says cloaking devices. But you could say, or you could argue that the, uh, the Treaty of Algeron only covers ship-based cloaking devices. Side note, I think the Treaty of Algeron's bullshit. Why would you willingly give up cloaking technology? Uh, it, it just gives you such a massive tactical advantage, or at least levels the playing field, so, yeah. Anyway, before I segue again, onwards. Used vice to slip high security zone on Koros 2. I'm not certain the color pay for me. I must get the right hands. I'm sure that Captain Sis, the device is safe. Deep space, run with transients and mercenaries. Just a simulation attempt. Personal, but for that young man involved in the Camerus incident, I don't have suspicions with a non Tyrion and any seems skills I need. A reference to us just there. So I heard Nick there, the panic, so I'm within hours of deep devices are well hidden. that others know where I have Bannock is not yet back into my quarters on the wait. So that risk at least I have this I'm scanning the devices is do indeed create a refract the wearer that may be okay that that's it so we've learned that the devices are basically cloaking devices very valuable clearly he was probably murdered for those devices and the question now becomes what's actually happened to those devices particularly because they can cloak a person. Uh, we are aware, of course, that there were red Lycosians uh, aboard the station. It did not specifically mention that the red Lycosians got off the station. So, yeah, we could be that's what we're dealing with here. Bannock, you managed to access Carrick's logs. Congratulations. Dax to Cisco. Go ahead, Lieutenant. All logs are open, Captain. Bannock cracked both ciphers. Well done. My compliments to the Ambassador. Dax, the Major and I have been discussing... I'm advocating a preemptive strike on the drones. Strike? When? As soon as possible. Right now. The Major feels that we should attack the drones now before their numbers become unmanageable. Is the Ambassador there? Bannock here, Captain. A report, please, Ambassador, on your progress with the Scythians. Okay, now, if you remember the last episode, if you've been watching this, for the five people who watched this, I did actually ask, why don't we just start blowing up the drones before uh, they become to unmanageable numbers? So, I guess they're going to answer this question as to why? Let's find out. Going well, I'm happy to report, Captain. Excellent. Then you found out where the drones are coming from, and why they're targeting Deep Space Nine. Um, well, maybe not that well. 
But I've found something in Ambassador Carrick's logs that might help. He said that the Scythians value individual words and economy of language. I'm going to try that approach. Try not to overwhelm them with words. Economy of language. Let's hope that helps. What have you learned so far? One of them mentioned Citadel. It's a place. I don't know where. Go on. One Scythian indicated he'd like to show Citadel to us. It's clear you need to talk again with the Scythians and learn more. Perhaps what's left of Ambassador Carrick's logs will be of help. Cisco to Yarrow. Yarrow here, Captain. Ensign, are the Scythians available for negotiations? Ambassador Bannock. Negative, sir. That is, they're not in the airlock. Captain, we have a, a malfunctioning airlock door here. What do you mean? The approach door, sir. It uh, keeps opening and closing by itself. Report it to engineering, Ensign. And if the Scythians show themselves, alert the ambassador immediately. Yes, sir. Yarrow out. Benjamin, Bannock hasn't had a chance to... Captain, the drones! We need to act! That's enough! Major, you want to calmly tell Bannock and Dax your proposed plan of action? Yes, sir. Look, look, the drones come here one at a time. When they're all here, they'll all attack. Why wait for that? Let's take the runabout, clean up the drones around the station, then follow the drones back to their source, destroying them one by one. You understand what she's proposing, Ambassador? Uh, yeah, that's very clear what she's saying. I'm not sure why she's ask they're asking us for our opinion. We're just trying to help uh, find out who murdered Carrig or not. I, I don't know why our opinion's been solicited here. But anyway. So there's an airlock opening and closing by its own. I believe Kira mentioned either in episode one or two that uh, a tool she was using just simply vanished out of thin air. And I think we heard a random sound at one point. Uh, I can't remember. I think it was when we were in the cargo bay. Um, we've just learned about the cloaking devices, so I think it's fair to say that there's someone running around the station with a personal cloaking device doing stuff. Second thing, why would the Scythians just be randomly waiting in the airlock to talk to you? I... Okay, whatever. Anyway, um... Axe, not wait, fight one by one. Well, we know what she's saying, so I'm just gonna say yes. Yes, I understand. Dax, I take it you don't agree with Major Kira's plan. No. We'll win the battle, but lose the war. These second wave drones are phaser resistant. To defeat them, we'll have to use the photon torpedoes. Once we do, we'll see a new, deadlier drone appear. It's this third wave of drones that we must fear. And the sooner we attack any drone, the sooner this final wave will be upon us. If it arrives before the Defiant returns, we'll be out of surprises. Bannock, you've heard the arguments. Your advice, please. Um, okay, but I'm still not clear how the drones are going to relay that information. I'm pretty sure there must be a, a, a relay drone that they're communicating with, so why not just jam their communications or basically blockade the wormhole with all three runabouts and prevent the drone from escaping and just blow them up. Job done. You say the new drones are phaser resistant? How do you know? Sensors indicate it. A lot more duranium in their hulls. Clearly faster, tougher, more capable machines. What do you think of Kira's idea, to follow the drones back to their source? The drones come from somewhere beyond runabout range. I'm positive of that. We need the Defiant. There is a deep space capable ship here at the station. The Scythian ship. Unfortunately for us, it belongs to someone else, and it's weaponless. <laughs> Stop relay drones, so now we maybe can answer my question. Lieutenant, you say the drones learn about our weapons and then send new drones resistant to them. What if we stop them from getting the message? Stop the courier drone, you mean? Exactly. Now that's an idea. Break their reinforcement chain. I think the ambassador has uncovered a new course of action. No runabout mission at this time. We continue preparations for the drone attack. Dax, see if you can create a simulated mission against the drones. Get it loaded into one of Quark's hollow suites. Yes, sir. Major, when Dax alerts you that the drone buildup is complete, you will take the Hudson. This time, we'll make sure no courier drone escapes through the wormhole. Yes, Captain. Bannock, our best chance of survival depends on better understanding our enemy and our potential friends. Please consider your negotiations with the Scythians as a matter of the highest importance. I understand. Good. Cisco out. 
Well, Bannock, despite your protestations, I see you have some diplomatic skills after all. I'm gonna make a comment, I'm just gonna finish this up first. Diplomatic skills? What do you mean? You found the middle way, Bannock. The one course we could all agree on. Anything else, Ambassador? Jedzia, Kerrig's logs. There's a lot of static. Bannock, if you saw what Metam Chlorini does to equipment, almost everything has been corroded away. I was wondering if you could help me listen to the logs, maybe decipher some of the trickier parts. All right. Which ones in particular? Some of the logs mention devices of some sort. Something valuable. Valuable enough to kill for? That's what I wondered, too. Uh, okay, I'm going to talk about the other thing quickly. So, I, I realize they want the player to be able to do something, but how did the DS9 crew not just easily figure out, well, why don't we just stop the relay drones? That, that It's the most obvious fucking answer to stopping them from bettering themselves and adapting to our weapons. <sighs> Whatever. Continuing. There's one here called Clarity. Something about a breakthrough with the Scythians. Sounds like exactly what you need. Let's hear it. Eureka, I believe I have the root cause of the Scythians' reticence. It is not fear of contact at all. Clarity of communication. Dear to them, they value individual. Context is our overly verbose. Overwhelm them. Economy. Minimal combinations. I now look forward to contact where I will be into use. Our overly verbose something or other overwhelm them. I think he's saying we use too many words. Clarity. E economy. Try that next time you talk to the Scythians. Talk like they do. One word. The right word. We already know that. In one of his personal logs, he talks about something called refraction mantles. Refraction mantle. Did he explain what it was? He also talked about getting a hold of seven very valuable devices. If those devices were the refraction mantles... I think you better tell Odo about this. It sounds like you may have uncovered a motive for murder. He tucked some tricorder scan data into his personal logs. Hmm. I'm going to download these scans into the station computer, Bannock. Maybe it can make some sense of all of this. That's all for now, Lieutenant. Thanks. Okay. Well, we've uh, learnt quite a bit this episode. Um, we had a puzzle. It was a very easy puzzle because I remembered it anyway. Um, I think as an adult that's quite easy to figure out now as well. But otherwise, yeah, just, just lots and lots of lots of dialogue um, where we don't really do anything particularly interesting. Um, so yeah, I'm going to cut it off for today on this episode. Uh, thank you for watching this boring game and my boring voice with my boring observations. Um, please do join me next week, or next week, next time. I don't know when, I, when I'm actually going to but do the next one. I'll just do this uh, as I can. Um, so yeah, join me next time. Feel free to leave a comment. And until that next time, do take care. <laughs>